Hello and welcome to another edition of KJ's Corner. I am Kyle John Fenton. Uh, that is KJ for short. Uh, this is KJ's Corner under the I'm Breaking Into Tech umbrella, where in short, I just have conversations with people that I've met either on LinkedIn, in life, you know, whatever trials and tribulations I've ever experienced. And I try to formalize those conversations in hopes that if you listen, you can get something to uh, help you either personally or professionally with me. I have Mike Panchu uh, or Michael Panchu on LinkedIn. Uh, his current role right now is a customer support analyst, but I put in brackets techie, and he'll go into that in a minute at Cordy. Uh, he's also a wrestling fan, which we're definitely going to discuss as well. Before we do any of that, Mike, how are you, brother? What's going on? I know we talked about it a little bit, but for everyone else listening, how are you? What's power things? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you for having me. Um, most definitely. I'm doing great. Life is good. Can't complain. Uh, how's everything with you? Everything's good, man. You know, on paternity leave, so I've been chilling for a while. You know, can't, as we're recording this, I'm in a month two of pat leave right now. Uh, and I will say it's it's it hasn't been a vacation, but it has been nice not necessarily having to wake up and worry about where my <laughs> where my income is okay. coming in. Cause, you know, that's there, right? So what about you? What, what's been good? You know, is there anything that is on the horizon that you like, you know, maybe personal or professional that you want to try and tackle in the near term or just kind of chilling? Uh, I'd say I'm chilling for now. I was recently out of a job for Ooh, seven, eight, nine months. So oh, wow. really okay. happy to be um, working with Cority. I started with them back in February. Uh, yeah, go into it. What is that? What have you been doing with them? So I've been working as a customer support analyst with them. I'm the first line of defense for any breakage in the software. A okay. client of ours will open up a support ticket and okay. we will handle said support ticket. We handle... A functionality in the software if something breaks with um one of the modules uh something's funky we're basically in a sense um if i had to use an analogy i use this a lot to my non-tech friends where the virtual bob the builder the break fix <laughs> okay <laughs> it's a good way to think about it yeah sure and and, and add on to that too so cordy they it looks like it's an ehs and sustainability tool correct yes yes so like, just curious, thinking out the box here, because I think, hey, like if you want to break into tech, right, we are under the umbrella, right? You probably would want to know what these things do. What are some typical problems that happen, but the business side, like obviously a module breaking, like, okay, fine. There's probably something corrupted from a data person. You understand that, right? But I'm saying like, what are the, what are the problems usually tied to the ticket? Like what are the modules that, you know, sometimes are the most common? I'm not trying to have you, you know, give out trade secrets on Cordy software or anything in terms of like what's broken. But like when you see a ticket come in, like what's the thing that's most tied to? Yeah, it's definitely most tied to one of the modules. We have a ton of modules uh, without getting too, too specific and secretive. If something breaks with uh, the advanced dashboard, clients are not able okay. to report on their analytics. Okay. Uh, something else with a spill possibly or that whole department sure. or the whole company okay. needs to be aware of a spill. Got it. But um, yeah, for the most part, definitely want to keep it uh, definitely confidential for uh, the clients. No, that's fine. Yeah, totally fine. And the reason I brought that up is like, you know, like as, as we're looking at this, like breaking into tech is more than just like, hey, I'm going to learn how to code and I'm going to do something or, oh, I'm going to learn how to like write design specifications and do that, right? It's like everything's usually tied to a business problem. So what you're saying is if there's some problem from a data perspective, and they can't actually port that into a dashboard that they need. Maybe there's some conversion or whatever needs to happen. They're going to reach out and do that. Or a professional service come in and do that, whatever. Or on the flip side, just like you said, yeah, if you're talking about sustainability, if some <laughs> some natural disaster happens, right, we probably should know about that too. What storyline right now, and I know it's completely off tangent, what storylines got you hooked in either WWE or AEW? I don't care which one. What storylines got you hooked the most? The Roman Reigns redemption storyline. Um... I say that because we're going to see this very slow burner face turn from him. He's on this arc right now where he's taken back the kingdom, so to speak, and he has to regain trust from the people he's gaslit and manipulated over time. My prediction is that he's going to continuously get beat down by the bloodline and he's going to reach out to Sammy, Jimmy, Jay, but with the long-term storytelling, they're going to be like, Nah, dude, we can't trust you. <laughs> oh, okay. So for context, for those who are listening, this is our mark out moment. We said we're wrestling fans. Yeah. So this is it. Roman Reigns is, I would say, the modern day equivalent for those of you who might know mainstream. He would be the modern day Hulk Hogan, John Cena, The Rock. 
He's that type of guy. Now, Cody Rhodes is also, I would say, that in this category as well. But in terms of, like, status, in terms of being featured on our television, Roman Reigns has been the guy. He's also The Rock's cousin, for what it's worth. Um, the storyline has been an absolute soap opera for the past, what, three and a half years at this point? Oh, it doesn't like, feel like that long, but yes, yes. <laughs> it's like, right? Like, because it's... Needless to say, uh, wrestling is exactly what you think it is, right? I'm going to ask you a follow-up question here in a minute. Wrestling is exactly what you think it is. It's still men and women, you know, in tights, fighting. It's play fighting. But they've gotten so much better at not insulting our intelligence, and I think that's why we like it. So I'm going to ask you, like, how many people and peers that you interact with regularly are wrestling fans? And how do you feel about being a wrestling fan? Because I think it's the best time to be a wrestling fan, and I can't. I'm shocked that people, more people don't watch this thing. I think it's the most entertaining form of like sports, anything ever. I think it's awesome, but I'll digress. Anything you have to say on that? I'm very glad you asked that. I have, I would say four who watch wrestling. Um, okay. I'm, gl I'm glad I have this because I'm sure you can relate. I belong to so many niche groups. I have a group just for wrestling, a group just for video games, a group just sure. for fitness. So sure. anything wrestling related, um, those friends are always down to go to a Raw or have like a, a party for a pay-per-view or what have you. Love that. That's cool. Yeah, there's um. so I bring that up because I mean, uh, so you're in mass. I wonder if there's a Discord community or like a meetup group. So we started one down here. Um, and by we, I mean my buddy Chris that I ended up meeting up with meetup. Uh, our Discord right now so on the community just bringing that up we have and this is not a flex by the way it's like i think you could probably find this yourself as well in your area we have 200 people in our discord across the yeah. carolinas which is great because like we have like chats i have my my other podcast is like this so like i literally we do it for this group and stuff like that so like it's really cool that you have even a smaller group because i think watching wrestling with others makes it so much better because the booking is so objective right it allows you to make you know just like we had like i didn't see the roman everyone turning on him again i thought it was going to be civil war against the rock <laughs> at some point right but that's the beauty of what we're seeing it's an art form right so anyway i digress i mean to cut you off continue actually <laughs> just dawned on me it's fun now being a wrestling fan because i don't have to ask my parents permission to go to a show i can just go <laughs> right you can just go yeah yeah right like you'd be like oh i need to go to the show i went to a couple i went to yeah i went to a few in rochester and syracuse but I've gone to so many more as an adult now. Have you been to any local shows up there? They've got to be good, no? If you've even been any. Um, no, I haven't gone to a whole lot. My buddy Brian, though, was trying to get me into chaotic wrestling. Uh, Sasha yeah. wrestled in chaotic. Oh, okay. Cha oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, because, you know, chaotic wrestling. Where is that at? <laughs> Independent pro wrestling. Oh, CW. Okay, cool. Who else? Let's see who wrestled in this. Yeah, this is just us going off on a tangent. Okay, notable wrestlers. <laughs> Brutus Beefcake, King Kong Bundy. Oh, Bret Hart made an appearance over there. Jimmy Snuka, Ricky Steamboat. Cool. Awesome. Oh, Kofi? Wrestle in CW as well? Uh, Kofi's you know from, uh, he's from Boston. Oh, well, that makes sense. Of course he wrestled in Chaos. Go, though. There you go. Cool. Yeah, I mean, you should go watch those i bet yeah. you they're great man i yeah so the the podcast that i do my buddy jake um he's actually we started the podcast we went to a meetup that xww it's a charlotte promotion you know down here and now he does commentary for him that's really really cool which i think is awesome like literally we just we were just the admins of our group we showed up we said we had the podcast we sent over the podcast to him and they said why don't you guys come on and do commentary I didn't have the time to commit that he did. I was just like, look, I, I can't. Right. And they were so cool about it. They're like, yeah, no problem. Like they, they weren't paying me or anything. Right. So it's not a big deal. But yeah, eventually they, you know, they give him, I think he makes like 50 bucks a shot. Which is pretty dope. To like, I was, he's going to the show anyway. So yeah. Now I get paid to go commentate on it. So yeah. And they do it at breweries all the time. So if Chaotix running like breweries or the same spot every time, I bet you it's a ton of fun. If you oh, have yes, gone, yes. I, you know, <laughs> what else? Uh, John Cena is big around here because he's from West Newberry. Um, yep. I've seen his dad around a couple times. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Is, I, that family seems so genuine. Like, the mm -hmm. Cena family just seems, like, very genuine, nice, and, you know, 
feel like it's not bad people you know when you when you see someone you know hit the the level of success that john cena has you know sometimes you think like oh it's just gonna get to their head blah 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 but he seems to be one of the most humble people and has a lot of humility around the experience he's had and he's just super generous too like i mean he has the record like no question in terms of like make a wishes for the is it oh, yeah. is it general right like i thought it was like in general because i know it's for the wwe it's like he's got the most by far but i thought it was like in general like 600 something that he's yeah like feels, in, feels in general it, it has yeah. to be at this point i would say yeah yeah, all these people listen to this being like, wrestling, what the fuck's going on? They're going to start looking up all this stuff and be like, what is this world? What's going on? But See, but many, 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 many tabs open, IT and wrestling is like, wait, what's yeah, going right? on? I, did, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, I don't know, man. I would say, and it's a, probably a good segue back in IT, is like, I think watching wrestling has been, you know, like watching wrestling to me has been so much more fun to watch because I watch it more objectively now. Versus like letting the simpleton of my brain just be like, oh, like, let me just feel something. It's like, okay, they gave me that angle for a reason. Why are they doing that? And I to tie it back into IT, which I'd love to hear from you, is deductive reasoning almost becomes a thing when we're watching wrestling. Like, it's not like slapstick TV where it's like, oh, okay, you clearly know that this is the the conflict that people need to go through. And the whole sitcom is based around that specific problem and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you get that all the time, but like, you get a lot of red herrings, you get a lot of things out of nowhere, and then you also get a match in the ring. Um, but like I said, it's that deductive reasoning. So they liked me so much from the community service side of things that they hired me during my senior year of high school. Okay. So cool. it was cool um, getting work experience while I was a senior and getting the uh, pocket change for burritos and what have you. <laughs> oh, dog. yeah, man. I mean, I, I know I'm going to deal with it too. Like I, I was even thinking about like, I used to ask my parents for money or whatever. And I was like, I never really thought I'd think of as a kid. And now that I have kids of my own, I'm like, shit, this is going to be like a thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> so like in any way that they could just have their own little, you know, cash don't have to worry about, but I don't know by that point, they'll probably have daddy's credit card. So whatever. No, I digress. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. So like, what was it? So you said you, they liked you so much. What was it they liked about you? I would say I was, I was reliable. I was good with the kids. Uh, what else? Just cooperative, and I was able to follow instructions. Uh, I showed up on time. <laughs> pretty, pretty easy things to be likable for sure. But okay, but go into that a little bit, right? I mean, granted, you're a high school kids, so like I understand. But like, did you notice that you had right? And I think this is going to delve into you moving into tech a little bit. Like, would you say that your ability to follow instructions? listen to authority, essentially be respectful. Do you think that that actually went a long way in comparison to your peers? Because you can't be the only one, but like, I'm sure that you probably noticed some differences in the way that you acted versus your peers. No, I would say they definitely noticed some differences. Yes. Um, would you say for the IT side of the house or when I was working at the school? Um, I would say, I'd say probably both are going to be the same answer because if we think about it, right, like it's your pro like, Anytime, like I, I look at, you know, like excelling in a career or whatever, like I've always noticed I've been like a little different than others. Granted, maybe it's because we're wrestling fans. I don't know. Right. But if facetiousness aside, right. Like, you know, I, I think we looked at things maybe objectively and even probably in high school. Right. Maybe you weren't as full fledged on that because, you know, hormones are a thing. But as you oh, become yes. an adult, I don't. Right. You know, but I'd say like as you become an adult, I'd still say so like I would say both to your question back. Like what, are, but let's let that segue. So answer the first one on maybe the high school front. And then as you moved into tech, what are some things you noticed? And maybe we'll see if there's some synergies there. Yeah, I would say the school for sure must have taken notice on me being a competent employee. If I was going through the basics, uh, you know, just showing up on time. Sure. I, yeah. I consider that a big deal, especially um, when you're a senior and you're juggling next steps and the hormones and trying to <laughs> Dude, find you, your place in yeah. society <laughs> of course yeah I, mean, I remember it i was there right it's nothing new like i had culture shock when i went to college so yeah i get it yeah i mean um you're working with kids too and this is like a parent's livelihood so the fact that they hired me to entrust me to be a teacher's aide for the kids in the after school program i thought that was a big deal i mean uh a big responsibility to take on it yeah, it is yeah was that like so the teacher's aid so that was um did, was that like you would take a whole day and do that like would you sit in the classroom like how, how did that work like i'm always because i was like yeah. high school student don't you still have to take classes so like how'd that work oh yes um i can get more specific 
So sure. I was the aide for the extended day program, that program where parents are not able to pick up a kid at, say, 2.30 p.m. So okay. they stay behind until 6 p.m. And we give them activities to do. Um, they do their homework. Got it. Okay. play outside. Got and it. Got it. You have, to, okay. you have to really monitor the situation, especially in the playground if a kid falls or if um, a kid is being a, a jerk to another kid. Guess what? You learned how to parent before parenting. <laughs> like, oh, like, like, I was like, like, dude, I mean, because you don't have kids, right? You don't have any children, no, right? No, I don't, no. right? Yeah. So, like, what you're de- what you're describing is like as parents, so you like you learn. It's we call it the club, so to speak. Well, some of us do. Some of us just don't care, right? I digress. But like, it's the it's the notion of like if you're gonna go to like a park, right, or whatever, you're gonna watch all the kids. You're gonna watch for yours, obviously. Make sure, but like, you're also gonna be paying attention to other things. It's like you were doing that, right? It was a, it's an act of it's leading with empathy is kind of the biggest thing, right? Like you, they weren't your kids. You didn't really care. You didn't have to care, but something inside you wanted to, right? That's just innate. Would you agree? No, I agree. I view it as a full circle moment too, because I went to this elementary school. I was in that position too, where I was playing on the playground with kids. Looking back, uh, yeah, I didn't come to that realization until uh, two seconds ago. (laughs) Well, but like, but these are the, that's why I love having these conversations, right? Because sometimes like, and also too, like not everyone gets the chance to like talk about what they did in themselves. So like one, I love giving you the ability because I could do this forever, man. I could do my own solo podcast for like whatever, but yeah. not for that. It's for you. And as you're talking through things, you're like, oh, wow. Like I wanted to do that. You may not have noticed it at the time, but like then you start to appreciate more and more things. I have that. I have those full circle moments a lot when I'm experiencing things with our children now. And I go, oh, holy shit. Like, now I understand what my parents said when I said when I was like 16, 17, 18, whatever. They'd be like, you don't appreciate this when you're, you know, a parent or whatever. And I was like, shut up, mom. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. And now, <laughs> right? Like, but now here I am. You know, see that. That's awesome. So speaking uh, of full circle, classic, so that's yeah. the, yeah, right? Classic, classic scenario where like, you know, oh, what do a, what a parents know? They don't understand. Will Smith wrote a song about that. You work in a tech role. What are some things that you do to train your brain to think more objectively? Because I think in order to actually thrive in a tech role, you have to be objective. So I'd love to hear from you, like how you get to that point or how you think. Um, Because a lot of this is not the tricks of the trade of getting a tech job. It's more like what's the mindset to be able to do so. So I'll stop there. Oh, for sure. I consider myself more in the emotional side of things, but (laughs) I would say for objectives, I try to look at the details. I try to really analyze the situation through this lens how many users are affected um is there screenshots of an issue that'll help me push the case forward all right corroborating evidence yep okay i'm starting to really learn this now too if there is a lot of back and forth on salesforce let's uh let's let's hop on a call so it'll make things easier so i can hear the customer out um what else? Uh, there take it is. more screenshots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's well, because that's a good thing, right? And I think from a career perspective, and I'll let you, I'll let you continue, but like from a career perspective, like taking screenshots is the equivalent of supporting your claim. If you're going to make a claim on something, be able to back it up. How many times did someone say this broke? You ask them where it broke and they can't tell you what happened. Oh, yes. I've been there before. <laughs> <laughs> right and if they took a screenshot of it you'd probably be able to deduct that like figure out where the problem is or tell them where to look or whatever so i'm bringing all that up to say as a side tangent like if you're struggling to you know present something don't just present the words present the actual like outcome like figure out a way to actually prove it that's without a shadow of a doubt and i think you know you'll be better off and i'm sure you agree right especially as you're closing sport tickets like i'm sure you love the ones where it's like hey here's the issue here's the logs here's this help you're like yes <laughs> like, let's oh yes saves <laughs> right? a lot of time um yeah anyway i digress i do like how we have certain environments where we can you know duplicate the issue the customer is having that helps oh, nice. tremendously okay. yep. when um mm-hmm. reaching out to a senior resource for help yeah and like duplicating too is like i think about like that's backing stuff up right like documenting your processes making sure it's there right and then obviously being able to you know recreate an issue is always good too from like a bug do you find yourself um i guess in your role and this is interesting just looking at kind of how tech works do you find that you are helping make product enhancements based on bugs that people are reporting is that like a natural line of communication that you guys have you might not be doing it specifically but i'm just curious because you'd said like enhancements and so on and so forth is that something that you've been involved in or seen like in real time I would say I've definitely been on 
the communication side of the house with reporting bug tickets. Okay. I would say that was one of my, uh, how to describe it, big moments, so to speak, where when my manager t- took notice that when a recent software release came in, there was a lot of bugs with a certain issue, and I was able to really just take it all in from all the clients, keep everything organized, and update every customer accordingly until this uh, bug was fixed. Uh, she was impressed by that because I was fairly new at the job at the time. Okay. So the ability to juggle multiple tasks, uh, work under pressure, I would say that really uh, shined through. Are you a gamer? I used to play uh, Smash Bros. competitively on the Wii U, but uh, my game like, days are a bit over. <laughs> that's fine, but like there was something in what you were unpacking there because I do this too, and like you're you're very like. I know you say you're emotional, but you seem very task oriented and you like, you want to complete objectives. That's why I asked the gamer part. Cause I was like, that's like achievement hunting. Like what you just described, but you're like, Oh man, I'm hitting the ground running. It's like, Oh uh, yeah. Because you, what you're doing is you're like, you're looking at the side quests, like all like automatically in your head and being like, how do I get to those most effectively? And like, that's kind of what you're doing in role. Now I, I know it's a crazy comparison, but would you agree? No, I agree. These are things okay. I definitely do think about one comparison I've learned from competitive gaming is that in a sense you're you're, you're climbing the ranking but at the same sure. time you want to take it to a job and be like hey climb internally yeah and like so what have, what have been some of the things and maybe this is the way we rounded it out it's a good segue so what have been some of the things you've learned in your career obviously we've unpacked some stuff that we've got recorded so i'll shoot the recording you can go nuts and <laughs> do whatever you want there but the um you know what are some things that you've learned you know over time working in tech that have helped you climb internally because you haven't described anything that's rocket science you said show up on time be a decent human being right <laughs> like do the work that's expected and i know it sounds you know it sounds like you know it goes without saying but sometimes that's difficult to do so like what are some things that help you stay on task like how do you keep your mind motivated especially if you say you're emotional right if that's yeah. true i'm sure it is right but if it is you're still very objective right and you have to be in your role so like what are some things you've learned just curious i've learned to definitely document every step you take this is critical because if you work in support you will have a ton of tickets and it's tough for your mind to just keep track of every customer every issue some issues are specific to a, a customer. customer. Yep. So to be able to take all of this in, it's critical to document everything. I personally use Microsoft OneNote. Okay. And I use Outlook to book appointments with clients also for myself, where I'll block out time for Mike to look at his cases so he can get some movement going on them. I also utilize the Sticky Notes app to jot down some things I have to get to throughout the day. Uh, so I don't forget anything. Um, my manager recently praised me for my ability to handle, um, what was it, 32, 33 tickets in my queue that are actively being worked on. I mean, that's that's a lot. How long, I mean, what's your average handling time per ticket? Ooh, that I'm not too sure. I'm blanking on that. To be honest. <laughs> Can you tell I'm in sales? Can you tell? <laughs> Like, right but but i asked because it's you know like when you say 32 33 it's like i mean if it's like a minute here and there but like i'd envision with a software like that you probably have to do you like do you have access to there when like that happens like i'm assuming they get you access like can you just like get into the back because i'm assuming that takes time alone just to go get into that thing right from a support perspective i mean yeah walk me through like you get a ticket what do you do <laughs> oh yes uh thanks for asking so <laughs> this is one habit i get into i try to read the issue two to three times so my brain can <laughs> that's important dude that's okay like don't just assume read it again and again. That, okay that's good yeah. i'm because uh, okay. you never know when your mind will play tricks on you <laughs> so i'll read it Been a couple there, man, times i'll ask okay. for uh screenshots if they don't provide it i okay. will ask some more questions such as is this issue happening in multiple environments or just one how long has it been going on KBs are big. Um, I try to look for documentation. Knowledge um, bases. For, the, for those, by the way, knowledge bases, that's what he's talking about. Yep. KB. Continue. My mindset is this on the daily. I try to exhaust all of my resources before I ask for help because I don't want to give off the impression that I'm just going to always ask for help and someone is always going to be a safety net there for me because I know as I learn and grow more in the world, they're going to depend on me to be one of the knowledgeable analysts and the 
go-to guys to um, train the new hires. So I do feel like a gaming character in a sense where I continuously have to level up or in <laughs> WWE terms, I have to go from the mid card to like the main event. You got to get over <laughs> You got to get over, bro. It's, yeah. but, but but it's a it's a good culmination, and I appreciate you actually sharing like legitimate ways that you do things because I think sometimes it's like what what I've really appreciated from this combo is I you you're intentional with what you do. Like you like you've been taking this chat, like you've been very like proper, and like you want you want to just make sure like you can answer questions, and you've been you're like respectful, and it's like I I think that's really really cool, and I think people listening to this, I hope, you know, get the the notion here that like being purposeful and intention intentional with what you're asking, why you're doing things and so on and so forth. And really, I think if we summer it, documentation to you seems to be the most number one important thing naturally for your role. But like, overall, if you document your process, in turn, and this is how I've leveled in my career, if I document what I did, and I can share that with someone else, we can now poke holes in it and figure out how to make it better for the next group, group of people. But because you were involved in that, now you get to move with that, right? If you're not doing that, you're not moving anywhere, right? And that's kind of what I've seen from you. And that seems to be working, right? Do you see yourself oh, yes, moving yes. up? In this? I mean, yeah, I mean, think about it. So like maybe too early to tell, but maybe in the next couple of years, let's assume you're still at Cority for a bit. Do you see yourself in a promotion? Do you see yourself getting the, the raise at some point? Oh, yes, because... um. I've been keeping track of my professional development. I have a tap for that in my <laughs> one note. I love it. I love because it. Uh, <laughs> I know how I am. If I don't showcase evidence to a person, I'm just going to goof up. Like, uh, I don't want to go to a manager and say, hey, I think I'm due for a razor promotion. And then they ask, mm -hmm. okay, so what have you done to back up this claim? And <laughs> what have you done for me lately? Yeah, yeah. but... But that's true. And to tie this all together, if you document what you've done, because, hey, no one can speak on your behalf better than you in your career. I'll say that till I'm blue in the face. That's what you're doing. Do you when's your cycle? When's your uh, review cycle? Uh, so I started back in February. Uh, so I'm at the midpoint right now, I would say. Midpoint. Okay. So, yeah, so you'll probably have a review, you know, around what everyone does around March, April. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'd love to see support analyst to senior support analyst that time on the review cycle i'd love to see it that'd be great um anything else you'd like to share with the crew before i let you go i would say definitely document your progress um your professional development uh a vulnerable area if you were weak in one area document how you overcame said area because you want to show them that if you can fall down, you can, you know, get back up. Or if you take a couple steps backward, you can definitely plow forward and uh, definitely be very intentional. And, oh, like you said, uh, back in the podcast, uh, be a decent person. <laughs> because at the end of the day where we are working with humans, we're not working with robots. Uh, you're working with somebody who has an issue, you know, they're struggling and they, they need another human to really just hear them out and help them out. Which you being a teacher's aide, man, that just gave you, it's, it's just crazy. Like you, you, when you work with kids, you just learn patience or you have to, otherwise you're not going to work with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not gonna work. It's just not going to work. Thank you, man. Thank you for the chat. It's yeah. been good. I learned a thing or two in terms of what actually happens from a support perspective. Never been a support ticket guy myself. I found myself building low code automations and eventually they said you should help us sell it um so that's what i've done but once again thank you for the time if people wanted to follow you on linkedin uh you are actually almost double i think the amount of followers that i have mr influencer michael over here uh he's got six thousand followers over there uh can they connect with you on linkedin uh, obviously we'll tag you in this post obviously um but you're open yeah. to that I see. yeah absolutely yeah awesome cool and uh, i believe you had actually connected with me right on that maybe on a comment or something i'm not entirely sure it's probably whatever i've seen you know a few things that you've shared um you'll say i just want to make sure people could connect with you um any other things that you on the socials that you have or is linkedin fine just linkedin for now um yeah i think we met through a comment section on linkedin uh, i'm not sure probably. how that happened to be honest wow. no, i'm happy we uh connected for sure because this is one thing i'm trying to tell some recent grads and even some friends who are in my age range right now that mm -hmm. Eventually, you have to, in a sense, create your own network and yeah. 
learn how to build connections without depending on the classroom to meet people or absolutely a job, so to speak. Um, you got to pull people towards you by investing in yourself and putting yourself out there. Yeah. And putting yourself out there in a way that's not superficial, right? Like I'm sure you know it, right? And you see, I'm pretty much as unfiltered as you can get, right? I'm not going to drop, you know, F-bombs in a comment or anything like that, but I'm going to give you like a reality if I feel it. I've even gone so far as been like, this is egregious for A, B, and C. And sometimes like that's gotten some love too, right? So I would say if you're thinking something, don't be afraid to put it out there as mm -hmm. long as you're going to be able to, like you said, back it up. Well, dude, thank you very much for the chat. Uh, with that, that has been another edition of Cage's Corner under the I'm Breaking Into Tech umbrella. This has been Mike with uh, Cordy. He's one of their awesome techies that handles all support tickets. He handles every single one uh, at Cordy. He is the guy for sure. I'm totally kidding, obviously. Uh, thank you once again for the time. Uh, once again, this has been Cage's Corner. I am KJ, and we'll see y'all next time. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.